So together, Penrose and Hameroff worked on their idea of entanglement going on across the brain, and the hypothesis is that these deep tubes humming away deep inside the brain's machinery, these orchestrate when and what collapses. So they call this orchestrated objective reduction. Give me the idea of, of orchestrated objective reduction. What does that mean? And how does that explain consciousness, potentially? Okay. Think of a... I used to, I used to play ping pong when I was at, at school, for instance, you see. And I never achieved any great skill with this, but I can understand that it's a game where you have to act very quickly. And it, the way, if I flick the ball into the right-hand corner as opposed to the left-hand corner, it's because I think by looking at my opponent that he's not expecting it for me to flick it into the left-hand corner. And so I do that flick into that corner because I think from what I've just gained, a very small fraction of a second, much less than half a second, I've estimated that this is a good thing to do. So I think that was a conscious choice. Now, what is the current view amongst, uh, I believe, and I get this from Stuart, the current view amongst neurophysiologists is that these actions are not conscious. They're much too quick. But Stuart's view and mine is that it is conscious. But it can only occur because of the following mechanism. The argument would be that you can preserve quantum coherence at a big level, that it's sufficiently isolated from the outside world, that in this layer you can preserve a lot of quantum coherence. So that this would mean that the action of flicking the ball this way rather than that way and this choice, is it made consciously? The current view is there's no time that the consciousness can come about much too late for this. But our view is no, there is time because the choice of which action to take can be a conscious one.